Praise the Lord. Open your Bibles to the book of Hebrew, chapter 12. Hebrew, chapter 12. Not forgetting, throughout the week, we got some stuff taking place. Tuesday, Women's Life Group, amen. And then also, uh, our Pastor Sonny, our founder, amen. He's going to be in the house of Seattle, amen, our region. So we're going to have Sister Julie and Pastor Sonny there. It's a luncheon, so you don't want to miss out. That means that's going to be noon. It's going to be a Wednesday, and it's going to be noon. So if you want to participate on that, amen, make sure you make plan for that uh, this morning. So Hebrew chapter 12, when you have it, say amen. Go to verse 12. And the Bible reads, and it says, therefore, therefore, strengthen your feeble arms. Say, well, and weak knees. 13, it says, make level part. Make level path for your feet, so the lame, so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Fourteen, it says, make every effort to live in peace. That word, make every, is a word of action. It's action. Make every effort to effort to live in peace with everyone. And be holy. Say holy. Come on, everybody say holy. Be holy. Because it says right here, without holiness, no one. That means no one will see the Lord. Say, well, see to it that no one falls short of the grace of God. And that no bitter roots grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that you are removing me. Let the Spirit of God flow through me this morning. Speak to your people as you've spoken to me. And I pray that you will speak with clarity and understanding. Remove any doubt, confusion, distraction. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we say amen. And amen. Turn around, give somebody a high wave or something. If you want to give them a high five, it's all right. Hallelujah. It's up to you. God bless you. You can be seated. Those that are watching as well, Facebook Live, we have many people watching throughout. Not only here in, in Tri-City, we got, we got people watching there in Puerto Rico. I got family watching. Can I get an amen? Virginia. Amen. We got people watching from... Um, Hawaii as well, hallelujah. Man, you know, something about Facebook, I mean, you could, uh, you could touch people's life all over, amen? And the good, the bad, and the ugly, hallelujah. But also, you know, we're using it for the good this morning. Can I get an amen? So this, this morning I titled the, the message, amen? Oh, they put it up there already, hallelujah. Uh, identify the roots. Identify. Something about... Our lives, amen, that we always got to be learning. How many of you thought that, you know, after high school, you stopped learning? You couldn't wait, right? You couldn't wait to get out of high school because there's no more school, no more, no more homework. But knowing, not knowing that after high school, you still got to learn life. Can I get an amen? And life is a journey. It's a journey of what? Of faith. When you come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ, Right? And we come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, amen. It's, it, it, it's, it's a journey of learning yourself and learning who you are. And identifying some things in your life that needs to be uprooted. Right? If you're serving God and if you call yourself a born-again Christian. Because there's many people that call themselves born-again Christians, but they're far from it. Can I get an amen? There's many... Uh, of individuals that come to church and they call themselves Christians. And the word Christian called Christ, right? The first word is Christ, Christian. In other words, you're identifying yourself with the Son of God. Right? The true living God. And many people themselves, they identify themselves as Christians. Because maybe it sounds good. Right? If you're single, you're meeting somebody, you go, oh, I'm a Christian. That sounds good. Right? Yeah, I'm a Christian. I go to church. Whoa, you go to church? I'll find me a good one. Right? 
And, and sometimes we use it as a resume for to getting other things in your life. Can I get an amen? But the truth is, amen, that we as men, uh, uh, the truth is that as we serve God, amen, there are more requirements to change. And when you have an encounter with God, amen, God demands transformation. He don't desire for us to stay the same way. That's what it's called being born again. Right? Being born again means that you're a new creature in Christ. The old things have passed away. Are you with me this morning? We don't walk the way the same way that we used to walk. We don't act the same way that we used to act. Hallelujah. We don't think the same way that we used to think. We don't hate like we used to hate. We don't envy like we used to envy. Hello, somebody. We don't covet like we used to covet. Right? Because you are a new creation in Christ. You're brand new. Say brand new. I even smell new. Everybody loves a new car. Hallelujah. The smell of it. Hallelujah. Right? And that's what happens when you give your life to the Lord. But, but there, there's, there's a thing called seed. And we're defined. We're defined as seed. Seed to be planted. Right? In good soil. We define it as a seed that was put, amen, so we can be birthed, so we can live, amen, a life. And everything we do is defined by that seed, right? And you're here to the, the, uh, uh, the gospel throughout the parables of the seed, and, right? And the good soil, and the bad soil, and the rocky, and all that. And we're defined by those things. And some seeds are good seeds, but some seeds are bad seeds, right? That's why this morning, the title is Identify the Roots. Because yes, 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 you're saved, and yes, we give your lives to the Lord. I, I, when I gave my life to the Lord in 94, I got delivered. Not only I got delivered, I got set free, Right? Because when I gave my life to the Lord, I, I wasn't, you know, this, I, I, I heard somebody, I even read it somewhere that nobody in their right minds is always searching for God. Like, out of nowhere. You know, you're out there messed up, go, I, I need to get right, I need to go to, to a church or search Jesus. Nobody is looking for Jesus out there. Can, I get, I, I, can you agree with me this morning? Because I remember when I was out there in the world, I wasn't thinking about coming to church. Can I get any man or praise the Lord or me too or something? Hallelujah. Or put the lights on. I don't see people. Okay, let's put the lights on. I mean, I don't. I see enough that I can't see. There you go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I like to see people's faces. Amen. Hallelujah. But I remember when I was lost, I, I don't know about you, but it happened to me. I wasn't, I wasn't searching for anything else. I was just searching to get in trouble. Right? Because the seed that was planted in me was a wicked seed of deception. Can I get an amen? The devil plants the seeds, and that seed of corruption, amen, was pretty grown. Amen. So therefore, man, it's, it's, you know, when you don't take care of some things in your life, it, it will take over your life. Right? It will take over your life. And that's what happened to me. You know, born as a Christian, not born as a Christian, but born as a, uh, living in a house of Christians because my mom and dad were Pentecostal Christians. So, so, so every day somebody was getting cast out, some demons. Right? We were having church every, every day in my house. If you were sick, I couldn't even lie. Man, I got, I'm sick. In the name of Jesus, you're healed. Let's go. We're going to church. I couldn't even, yeah, because that's, that, was, that was the atmosphere in my house. But a seed was planted within my soul. In the midst of what was happening. A seed of what? Deception. Are you with me this morning? Right? And next week I'll talk about the weeds and tear. But this 
This morning, I want to talk about identifying the roots. Right? Because there's many roots, amen, but what are the roots that are pulling you? It depends in the kind of seed that was planted in your life. I know that in my yard, we have a, a, a yard. I don't like yards. <laughs> because you have to cut them and take care of them. <laughs> I don't, you know. I, heard, I saw a video on TikTok. Yeah, I watch TikTok. So that's just me. <laughs> Sometimes. I don't, don't judge me. I saw this, girl, this lady, she was cutting the grass, and she just, she just left it alone. Forget equal rights. <laughs> you know how your people are talking, equal rights, and she was doing the yard. Go, man, this, forget the equal rights. This is a man's job. <laughs> and she walked in the house and left the lawnmower in the middle of the yard. <laughs> you know, so, so nobody likes to do the yard. But in the yard, there's, there's a, a, a thing that comes out in those yards are dandelions. Little flowers that look beautiful. They're like yellow, but nobody wants them, but you have to kill them, right? <laughs> I look at them and say, man, those are nice. Like, they just leave them there. No, they're weeds. <laughs> weeds in what? In disguise. They look nice. Oh, you don't hear me this morning. It's in disguise. They look beautiful on the outside. And you cut them up on the top with the lawnmower. Guess what? They got some roots. And those roots, you know how deep they go? Ten feet deep. Say what? That's what I said too when I was looking. I go, what? That's taller than Caleb. <laughs> I goes in there. Hallelujah. And then we think that when once we cut it, it's all gone and good and dandy. Hallelujah. But apparently they multiply. Or suddenly you started with one. Now you got a bunch of them because you cut them the wrong way. And they have seats on top. Hello, somebody. They look beautiful, but yet they're disguised. They got some roots. Are you with me? And sometimes when we come to Christianity, that's what happens. We give our lives to the Lord, but we just cut the head off. We don't take care of the roots. Right? That's why I said, when I gave my life to the Lord, I got set free and delivered. And those words, whatever junk I had, God took it out. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Hello, are you with me? Brother Maddox excited, hallelujah. When I gave my life to the Lord, you know, I was a method. You know what that means? I was a tweaker. You know what that means? I focus on things too long for no reason. Can I get an Amen. That's what tweak, tweaker is, right? You like focus on one thing for a long time for no reason, right? Some people tweak with their fingers, they're like that. And I used to go fix VCR. You know what VCRs are? <laughs> Anybody remembers VCRs? Come on, look at me like all the young people. What is thou saying? I used to get two VCRs, and they were working fine, but I, wanted, I don't know what I wanted to do, fix the other one. I'll be there for two or three days trying to fix one rubber, hallelujah, the thing. And it's already working. It's funny now, but I was serious then. <laughs> I was that serious to fixing it. That's what drugs do to you. Or to me, can I get any man? Until, until I realized that that I needed something new and changed in my life. And I knew the answer. The answer was Jesus Christ. But I knew that once I gave my life to the Lord, it's going to cost me my everything. I was one of those smart sinners, if you want to come smart, but they were probably pretty dumb. If I gave my life to the Lord, then that means I got to be committed to the church. You know, I don't want that. Hello, right? I was kind of the person that if you give me my, I gave my life to something, I gave it 100%. If I was going to be selling dope, I sold 100%. If I was going to be tweaking, I tweaked 100%. If I was conniving people, I conniving them 100%. Hello, can I get an amen? I was an extremist. So no extreme sinners or extreme Christian. And I came to this church, Victory Seattle, and God was speaking to this 
through this man of God, Pastor Johnny, and, and it was targeting me. Because every message, listen, my friend, you can come from different race and culture and background or whatever it is, but if the word of God is living, it's going to talk to you. It's going to speak to you regardless of your ideas. And it was a good message. So good that I don't even remember the message. That's when you know it's good. Let me ask you about this message tomorrow. We'll see how good it was. It was good. I know you're talking about something was good. But I know that, that I felt the Holy Spirit in the back row because I was in the back row at the first, my first time I walked in. After that, they were, walk, they, they were walking me to the front. And God spoke to me and I was diving and I became a quick boxer. And they were coming, the bullets were coming like, <laughs> and found me hiding. And I said in my heart, not my mind, because my mind was saying, don't listen to them. And I was sitting, bah. And eventually, he did the altar call, and I was fighting with my feet. You ain't going, you, ain't, you stay right here. You're a macho man. You don't need that stuff. The consequences. What are the concepts? You're going to lose everything. You got to give up everything. But what what happened was that I opened my eyes and I was already in the altar when I was thinking that. Ever ever happened to you? You fight and then you find out you're in the altar. Matter Matter of fact, you're on the floor crying. That's what happened to me. I was crying. Mocos coming everywhere. And I remember when I got up, it meant I felt the chains broken in my life. The chains of God be broken. And my addiction was broken. Can I get an amen? Yeah. All the stuff that I think I was set free. Amen. And, and I was able to think. And I was able to see. And then my mind, because I still had some seeds. My mind was saying, what did you do? I did the right thing. Then I went back home. And I had a big old thing of methamphetamine in my freezer. And I grabbed it, and I flushed it down the toilet because I was set free. Now, the person I was with did not agree with that. (laughs) You're set free, but I'm not. But for me and my house, we're going to worship the Lord. And I gave my life to the Lord. But still in the midst of giving my life to the Lord, things got delivered. But yet there were some roots that were still in there that I needed to identify. To make sure, to make sure that I took care of those areas in my life. So therefore I could continue to go to the next level in my life in Christianity. Because there were some things in my, in my roots that was planted in there called like hate in my life. Hallelujah. There was this individual that I hated in my life that you, that you will say, you know, when the person's not there, what do they say that? Out of sight, out of mind. But God has a funny way of bringing those things back because he wants to make sure that those things are uprooted within your life. Like hate or envy. Are you with me this morning? Because we could come to church and worship God and praise God and, and have a good day. But that person will show up and you'll be like, ah. Oh. Because God is in the business of transforming. God is in the business of changing people's life. God is in the business of renewing your mind and your heart. Can I get an amen? And just because we come to church and just because we look good doesn't mean that we are well done. In other words, amen, we're not done yet, amen. Things are got to change within our lives. And that's what's called a journey of faith, believing and trusting God. Although sometimes we think we're there yet. But we're not. Not even the longest serving people or person that is here or serving God. You're still not done. Yeah, you might have many victories, but yet... There's many things that are still rooted in our lives that the devil plants in our mind. 
There's a devil, there's an enemy called devil. Chamuco, Big Red, Satanás, whatever you want to call him, don't call him your husband, though. Right? But he comes and plants seeds at nighttime. I wonder why at night. And I don't mind. The Bible says it's the devil's playground. Hello, somebody, and that's another message. But he plants a seed because he's a counterfeiter. A counterfeiter. In other words, everything that God does, he has to what? Counterfeit. Are you with me? Everything that God does good, he wants to what? Counterfeit exactly what God has done. Right? We have worship. We have music. We have worship. God created worship. But the devil created what? It's called worldly music. Counterfeit. Hello? Right? He likes to duplicate what God has done and try to make it look identical, but yet it's kind of, it's fake. There's many Christians in many wrong beliefs because they what? Counterfeit. You can't even have a counterfeit Jesus. It looks good. It sounds good. They worship God. They praise God. They do everything, in, but they have some counterfeit in it. It's called false teaching. False prophets. Are you with me this morning? Amen. But we're talking about roots, and the roots, what it means? The root means, or the definition of roots is the underground part of a plant. Right? Also called the food storage or the anchor. Say anchor. Or the support of that that comes out. The source. The underlining. See, often, listen, often spiritual problem exists because we cannot recognize the enemy or our enemy that is a counterfeit or hiding or cover up. See, the devil will cover up some things within our lives and make us feel that we're okay. Are you with me? Or oh, this is too much. Maybe this is for Facebook Live. Right? Because we can come to church, right? It happens to church. You come to church and God moves, right? But it might not move in your life. Because there's something that you're, we're covering. Right? Something that is rooted. Back in the days when they used to fight wars, I would say 200 or 300 years ago, when they used to fight, they used to, they used to wear colors, which would be red colors or coat on one side, or, and the other one would wear bright blue. That's where the crits and the bloods came through. No, I'm just kidding. But that's what happened back in the days. And they will march together in a single line, and they will face each other without hiding and covering, and they will fight and kill each other until the last man stand. Right? You see it in war movies. Back in the days, they used to come against each other. Nobody was hiding, and they will fight straight in line. Gah! Gah! Die. Keep on going forward until the last man stand. You can see the enemy in front of you. He was not hiding from us or from them. He was right there in your face. Nowadays, amen, the devil covers himself. So you don't know who your enemy is in front of you. The devil's not going to come to your house looking like we see him in the movies. Like the kukuya. He's going to come like a smooth operator. Like a friend. Like an angel. Because he is an angel. Hello. And bring what seeds of deception within our lives to be planted within our lives. So therefore, it will take root eventually. Can I get an amen? If we allow it. If we don't recognize it. We live in a century now that the enemy walks around. Amen. And nobody recognizes him because he's hiding his true identity. And he comes to our house. He comes to our work side, and he comes even to the church. Right? 
he comes to the church as well. He might even be lifting his hands. See, Satan rules by the roots. That's his rule by the roots. The roots, the roots of the problem is the heart. And the heart of the problem is the problem of the heart. Oh, you didn't get that one. Come on now. John chapter 10, verse 10, it says that these come out to steal and to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to give you what? Life, life, and abundance. That's what God comes. You came to God because you want life and life what? Say it. In abundance. Not life in misery. Not life in chaos. But I have come to give you life and life in abundance. What does abundance mean? Amen. A multitude of things. The fullness of God. Can I get an Amen. Not to be in the same old same, the same old thing, hallelujah, the same old issue, the same old hate, the same old envy, the same old jealousy, hallelujah. Because we have not identified the roots of the problem. You need to understand and identify. In my life, I had many roots that were not good. Well, I gave my life to the God, and God set me free, and I was set free. But there were some things that, that needed to be come up so it could be pulled out and dealt with. And you know how God dealt with it? With people. God uses people to deal with some issues. Whether you like it or not, that's what God does. He will use that person next to you or across you. Or even a family member to deal with some things that, that needs to be dealt with. You hear things like you never change. You're still the same. So I go to that church for like 10 years. They see me change. But apparently your family sees the same person for a reason. Because you can be worshiping God here and we all see you here and we all see you the big Bible you're carrying hallelujah and we assume that you're reading it praise the Lord and you talk right you walk right but you can be a different individual are you home oh you didn't get that one hallelujah there's many people like that today they come to church they look good amen but you identify differently at your job site you identify yourself differently at home because that's when you begin to hear, you can't fool me. You ever heard that before? You can't fool me. You can fool them, but you'll never fool me. I know who you are. Am I talking to somebody here? And it has to do with the root of the problem. The root of the problem is that you have, we have not changed. Can I get an amen? If we, not allow, we have not allowed God to be the gardener in our soil. Can I get an amen? We, not, we have not allowed God to begin to dig again and break the soils and begin to what? Make it better. Right? For whatever reason, we have not allowed those things. And sometimes we begin to look good in the outward, but in the inward, we're made of cheese stuff. In the inward, we're made of what? Cheap stuff, all taped up with duct tape. Remember duct tape? It worked for a little bit, but eventually it's no bueno. Right? That's when we go through those houses here in the Columbia River, we go through them. They look ni nice houses, right? Like, wow, those are beautiful houses. One day, well, people become, we become dreamers. One day, I would like to have it like he knows. One day, I would like it if the your wife looks like, yeah. One day, yeah, one day it's going to be when. But it, it, but it begins to, it looks beautiful, right? But we don't know what's going on in the inside. We don't know what's happening in the inside. But the hour looks beautiful. Man, they got it made. But in reality, it can be filled with cheap stuff. And it's evident every time we see movie stars. Trying to commit suicide. Divorces. Look at J-Lo. How many divorces she got? 
right? I thought you were happy with that. But apparently money doesn't bring happiness. Hello? The house looks nice. Everything is beautiful. But inside, it's made of what? Fool's gold. Can I get an amen? Right? So therefore, amen, just because the other side looks greener, like they say, the other side is greener, it doesn't mean, amen, that they look, they're doing the right things. The only reason that your grass is still looks dry and dead is because we have not taken the time to water it down. That's what happens in my house when the sprinkler breaks. Right? Big old dry patch like that. Like, oh, what happened there? I'm not a sprinkler guy. Hello? But the whole neighbor knows there's something's wrong with that yard. Even the city knows. Right? Because it's visible. Are you with me this morning? You, am I getting somewhere? Right? So therefore, it meant what we have to do is what? Water. Take care of it. And how do we do that? We do that by having a, a devotional life with God. First of all, we have to come with repentance to God and ask God for forgiveness. Forgive me for what? Thinking the wrong idea of Christianity. Can I get an amen? Thinking and having this wrong perception of what a Christian is. When the reality is what God wants us to what? Be sanctified and be holy. Because without holiness, guess what? No one will see the Lord. And how do you get to holiness if we have some roots that are filled with bitterness? That's what the scripture says it right here. Make every effort to live a, in peace with everyone. And I wonder, why is it emphasized in making an effort to live in peace? Because all of us that are not so-called Christians, we strive to be in strife. Some people just like to be in fights. Can, can you agree with me? <clears throat> Man, you just found something to fight for. It was just a paper on the floor. But you want to pull out the knife and everything, pick it up. We, we, you know, somebody cuts you off, you want to just chase them. Well, you going to hit them with the Bible? Oh, no, get you. Oh, I got my Bible. I forgot my weapons. What that? Put the Bible away. Take your shirt off. Because usually you're wearing victory outreach or something. Yeah, man, Jesus loves me. Take it off. Take it off. Let's go. What's up? Looking at me like you've never done that before. <laughs> Hello, somebody. What are you following this dude for? He cut me off. Nobody cuts me off. Hello. What the heck? Are we going to actually squab with this dude or what? <laughs> Am I going to lose my testimony or what because somebody cut you off? What was going to be the verdict when he pulls over and says, what's up? I just want to give you a flyer. That's all. Jesus loves you. It's just my opportunity to minister to you. <laughs> right? The crazy part is, is this is a small city. And if it happens here, that person could be at church the next week. Never thought about that one, huh? And you're sitting right here. You're beautiful, Lord. And he shows up. Hey, that's that dude. And he looks at you and goes, hey, that's that dude. And you're up here like, I want to welcome everybody. I go, wait a minute. <laughs> that's that dude. They chased me all the way to Walmart. <laughs> and that's when the scripture comes out and says, by your fruits. Oh, that was hard too right there. You'll be known. Oh, Ouch. He knows you as what? An intended guy. Somebody wants to just kill me. That's why he knows you're a criminal. You chased me all the way to Walmart. 
want to fight with me. But over here, you're like, lift your hands, brother. Welcome to church. What the heck? See, so get the picture? God has a funny way to bring some things out. And by your fruits will be known. So let's not judge the church and its work. Let's identify the root of the problem. It might not be the pastor or the leadership. It has to probably do with your indiv individual self. Are you with me? We, we love, we love, human being loves to blame others. We love to do the blame shifting game. Are you with me too this morning? And it started with Adam and Eve. That's prime example when I started. The women you gave me. Hello, somebody. The serpent deceived me. And eventually, what? Well, they blame God. It always happened. You start with them, and eventually we blame God for whatever happens to our life. But in reality, is we never identify the issue of the problem, which is the root of the issue within your life. God brings it up, though. God will bring it up so you can deal with it. And how do you deal with those things? Realizing that, that you have it and then come with repentance and knowing that I'm not going to go that route no more. In other words, if you hate somebody, God will bring it out, show it to your face. You must identify it and say, God, forgive me for having that. I accept it. Let me move forward. That's the way to deal with those things. But we don't. What we do is, I got to go. I can't usher today, Pastor. I got to go right now. An emergency happened. And you take off because you, wanna, you don't want to deal with it. Then you go to another church, and there he is. And then you go to another church, and there he is. And then you go to another church, and there he is. And then you go to another one. I'm going out of town to this other church. And there he is. Why? Because the issue is not the church. The issue is identify the problem within my life that God wants you to deal with it. Can I get an amen? You can run and you can hide. But eventually God is going to show up and say, are you going to deal with it? Or are you going to run? And usually what happens is it will take us years to recognize it. It'll take us years. You know, I'm, I'm about to close this morning. When God used to, God deals with me in many areas. I, I get dealt with, believe me. People don't think so. People are like, ah, oh, you're the pastor. You got it easy. I think I have probably worse than everybody. Because I have to deal with not only me, myself, my family, but I got to deal with everybody else's things. I think, I think it's easier just to deal with me. Hallelujah. So I think. But God called me for this. So therefore, I said, yes, Lord, use me. It wasn't forced on me. It was not mandated on me. I said, yes. I said, yes, I'll do this. Are you with me? <laughs> but God deals with my, in my life and and when I was a, a young Christian, I had many stuff that I, I, I never thought that I had in my, in my heart. Never thought that I had that, but I did have it. God will bring people, specific people to the church. And I don't know how you found this church in Rainier Valley, in the middle of the hood. You found it. And you showed up. Because God is specific. I had an anger issue. How many of us had that before? And I had a hate issue. I was a gang member, so therefore, I had plenty of hate to give out. And there was a specific gang that we hated the most. If they had anyone that is the most, that this one was the most hated by us. And I shared this before, but some of you guys haven't heard it before. And I'm going to share it today because it's identifying the roots. 
And I'll, I, I'll play worship, for those that know. I'll play the drums. I said, you know, I passed it on to my other sons. Hallelujah. And I play the timbales. It's two little things, and I play the timbales, and I have a little corner somewhere. Amen. And I play my timbales, and one day, this guy showed up, and I shared before, there was a cholo guy that came in, and he was mad-dogging me. You know what mad-dogging is? Looking at you crazy, like, or crazy, like he wants to just tear your heart out. Hello? And I was there, like, playing the timbales, saying, what's up with this dude? In my mind, playing and stuff, and the guy stood looking at me. And the church is small. And you could, I could feel his eyes burning in my soul. <laughs> That's how bad it was. And so many guys staring at me bad. Like, not, not, not even giving me a, a smile or nothing. It just intense. And then I sit down, and I, and I sit down. I think I sit down, like, uh, in front of a row, and he was, like, two rows down. And I could feel his eyes still, like, burning. And he, he could see through me the pastor. That's how bad it was. Exaggerating. exaggerating. But, yeah, I turn around, he's still looking. Like, oh, my God, what's up with this dude? I go do the work. I do the the altar call, and I'm doing it. Dude's still staring. Did, did the altar call. He didn't move nowhere. He's just... Still looking, I'm staring, I'm not even lying, staring, like he didn't, I moved this and he followed me. Hello, I'm like, I got mocos here, I got, what's going on? My hair's out of place, I was tripping, what's wrong with this dude, right? So I stayed longer fellowshipping, and it's a whole thin hallway like this to go by, to get out. And then, okay, I figure everybody's gone, so let's go, and you know, sure enough, he was waiting right there, staring. Bad. I'm bad. I was like, I was getting complex already. Hello. So my intention was to just go around him, but then the Holy Spirit, I went, hey, what's up, bro? How you doing? God bless you. I'm James, right? How you doing? And I'm trying to break that ice because I mean, he's staring at me like crazy. Hey, what's up? And he looked at me like, you know, with the lip and everything. And he called me by my street name. Nobody knew my street name. Nobody in the whole church. I didn't pass. I didn't tell nobody. I still don't tell people here sometimes. And he called me from my stream. Ain't you told so? From, from Long Beach? And he looked when I died in wood. And I said, and I, oh my head went like that. And I said, who wants to know? That was my response back in the world days. Because I wanted to know who he was so I could be ready. Who wants to know? And he told me, boom, bado, And he said, what's up? And all my hair went, all the hay came out. And then God said, right there. There it is. And I said, man, you want to, and I got the Holy Spirit took over. And I started ministering. You know, God can change your life. This and that, God changed my life. And he said, bro, I want to show you something real quick. Give me a minute. And he went like this. Open his bag. I said, "Priest, Lord, let it let it be nothing shiny, because there's gonna be some Holy Ghost kick going on right now." Uh, come on, in the name of Jesus, help me, guys, help me, Hallelujah! But he pulled out the Bible, opened the Scripture, give me a script. I don't remember the Scripture, and then he looked at me. God could change your life, bro. He can change mine. <laughs> Hello. As the worship thing comes. Identifying the roots. I didn't know that I still had some hate. Until he brought it to my face and said that name. And all that hate came out. Like, boom, like, oh, what's up? And then God set me free. I was able to pray for him. Listen, I was able to pray for him. Give him a hug and tell him, hey, come to the home. He said, bro, I'm in a run right now. I got to go. But seeing you can change my life. You don't, you don't, you don't, we don't understand. Because if you don't deal with the root, God brings it there to deal with it. And if you ignore it, if I would have said, oh, forget this guy, boom, boom. I would have lost everything. My character, my integrity. All the stuff that God was working. He said, man, I need to get rid of that right there. Because you're going to be dealing with a lot of stuff like that. And you need to be ready. When somebody gets in your face, calls you by your name or calls you this, and you're going to be what? Hating? Or you're going to love them? Or are you going to pray for that individual? This 
is the life that I have chosen. That requires for me to be holy with God. Because my desire is to see my Lord. I want to see my Lord. And he says that nobody will see him if they're not holy. My life, I re, I'm not perfect. I'm, you hang around with me, you'll see some shortcomings. I might lose it one day. Because, yeah, somebody made me mad or something. That was somebody with my family or something. I don't know. I'm pretty passive nowadays. My wife knows that. Hallelujah. I'm a, I'm a peacemaker. Right? Somebody cuts me out, I slow down. I think it gets more angry if I slow down. I go ahead, bro. What? What? What is it? What's going on? What's going on? I'm just slowing down so you, so you, so you can go. You want me to go faster? Okay. What are you doing? What are you doing? Like, you're talking and stuff, flipping me off. Like, okay, let me park. Go ahead, bro. Hello, right? Because in those areas is when we are tested. Not in church. Sometimes at church we get tested, believe me. But when you walk out of here and you go home and then God begins to deal with you in the private of your home. When you're fighting to be holy and then impurity comes in your mind. I don't mind the devil's playground. Start tripping about things in church. You know, People are home just chilling. Hello? You know what chilling is? Relaxing. But people are just tripping. Because we allow the enemy to plant seeds. Even as a Christian. Instead of recognizing, oh, that's a bad seed right there. Oh, I better distinguish that real quick. Hallelujah. And get in your word. See, the Bible says that bad roots hurts more than actually the plant itself. As we stand here this morning, I'm going to close with this. But next week, next week I'm going to talk about the wheat and the tear. But this morning I'm going to read the same scripture as we all stand. The same scripture, but I'm going to read it from the message you translated translation which is hebrew chapter 12 verse 14 through 17 it says it says i like the way it says it that's why i'm going to read it because i like to read and understand stuff i let it here it says work at getting along with each other and with god that's heavy right there though for me it's heavy because that's the most probably probably the second or the top five issue that we have is getting along with each other. And this is work at it. Not only with each other, but with God. Get along with God. Otherwise, you'll never get so much as a glimpse of God. A glimpse. He said, make sure no one gets left out of God's generosity. No, my job is to make sure nobody gets left out of God's generosity. I want to make sure that God blesses you. That you're not left out. Keep a sharp eyes out of, for the weeds of bitter content, of discontent. You know that as a Christian, we can develop or have roots of bitter. In the world, we were bitter against the things of the world. But yet, in Christianity, it develops being bitter against the people of God. You ever noticed that before? In the world, you were bitter against the things of the world. And I thought you were a bitter person. But when you come to God, now you're bitter in the things of God. A thistle or two goes to the sea, gone to the sea, can ruin a whole garden in no time. In other words, a bad seed in the church. Can ruin the whole garden. Watch out for the Esau syndrome. You know what Esau is? Esau is the individual that sold his blessing for a cup of soup. 
traded away God's lifelong gift in order to satisfy his short-term appetite. You will know how Esau later regretted that impulsive act and wanted God's blessing. But by then, it was too late. Tears or no tears. So therefore, as men of God and women of God, we, we need to use wisdom. Say wisdom. We need to use wisdom and ask God to be the exposer of things in our lives that needs to be fixed. There's some things that I got to fix. I'm a pastor. I got to fix some things in my life. There's some things in my area that I, I got to I gotta adjust. Hello? I might think different sometimes, or I might do this sometimes, or I might be tripping or something. I might even complain about people. That's something I got to fix. Hello? Pastor's always like, yeah, maybe I got to deal with that. That shows me that I'm not perfect. Hello? But identify it. I identify it. I see it. People tell me stuff and say, hey, oh, I'm going to stop that. Matter of fact, I say, forgive me for saying that. I'll change it. You'll never hear from me again. But I make the effort to make sure to make sure that I do. Are you with me? Don't say something and don't do it. Wives, a husband, they hate that stuff. Hallelujah. You, can I get can, any couples here? Or am I the only married here? Amen. When you say something, you don't do it. They always remind. Remember, you said that you never do stuff that you say. Right? That's where I learned the master of shutting my mouth and don't say nothing. Because that way, if I don't do it, hey, I didn't say it. Hallelujah. But if I stay on my wife, babe, we're going to Disneyland in December. You better make sure I go to Disneyland in December. I didn't tell you what year, though. <laughs> December comes, you're like, hey, December's here. I better come through. That's why I don't say nothing. And I say, hey, let's go, baby. Like, where? This and that. Well, praise the Lord. Who's going? Just you and me. Let's go. Hello. The wisdom. 21 years married. Hello, somebody. Come on now. Wisdom. That's what the Bible says. Be quick and enthusiastic to listen. Quick to listen. Slow to speak. Listen first. Don't open your mouth first. Listen. Let wisdom marinate before you say something. Come on, lift your hands right there where you're at. Let's go. You got a worship song? Let's go. He's going to sing a worship song right here. to open this altar here this morning if you have identified something some roots in your life that needs to be taken care of maybe when I spoke this message God revealed something within your life 
I'm going to ask you to come here first to this altar and come with that attitude of repentance unto the Lord because God desire for you to get close to him. That's his desire. He wants to spend time with you. And he cannot do it if there's something that is holding you between him and you. It can be, it can be unforgiveness. It can be something that took place when you were a kid or something that you're still holding on that is rooted in 10 feet deep. And God wants to heal that. Come on, let's go. Go ahead. Right there on Facebook Live. Lift your hands right there. God spoke to you too. Lift your hands right there where you're at, wherever you're at. Identify the roots. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Come on, lift your hands right there where you are. Just ask God to forgive you from your sins. Hallelujah. In the heart of repentance this morning. Be honest with God. Hallelujah. Oh. Let him know. I need your help, God. I need you, God. I need you, Lord. I need you, God. I desire to be holy because you are holy, God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, there's power in the blood. Oh, hallelujah. you watch it on Facebook Live or even here in the sanctuary, for my life, I needed to change something in my, in my life to, to be transformed. I needed to accept the Lord as my Savior. I, I have many issues. One of us, hate and anger, even racism at times. But that has to do with the sin that was in my life. Because sin is not just one thing, it's many things. There's many things in our life, and for some of us, 
we use the drug as an excuse, but in reality, we have some issue of the heart and the side of our lives that, that only God can change. And what I'm saying here this morning is that if you're looking for that answer or that solution, you try many ways or try many things out there. For me, for me, what worked was Jesus Christ in my life. And it's still working. For me, I gave Jesus a chance in my life. I gave him a chance to come in my life. I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. I recognized that I was a sinner that needed to be saved. Saved from what? Saved from eternal death, which is actually hell. I don't want to go to hell. Eternal death is real. And eternal life is more real. So I want to give you this opportunity here this morning. If you want to give your life to the Lord as the saints are praying with me. Interceding for those that need to be saved throughout Facebook or even here. I want to give you the opportunity to come to Christ this morning. You want to be filled with all kinds of stuff. It don't, it don't have to be drugs. Sin is not just drugs. It's outward appearance. The drug is. But the heart is you. That's the question. Unforgiveness, hate, jealousy, covenant, lust, pride. Those things. And God can change your life. Because your intention for your create for you being created wasn't just to live life. Because has God has a purpose in your life. You're not a mistake. Oh, this is not a coincidence. So I want to give you a chance. And the chance is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it's simple. Only thing you have to do is lift your hands. And then that's admitting that you need God in your life. I admit I need, I need, I need Jesus in my life. I admit that I'm a sinner and, and I need God in my life. I need some change in my life. And that's what you have to do here on Facebook Live. You can lift your emoji if you want to or whatever it is or lift your whatever you're doing just lift your hands right there where you're at and accept the lord jesus christ this could be your only chance i don't know so if you want to give your life to the lord i i'm going to ask you to lift your hands and i say i, I want to give my life to the lord as everybody's praying amen praise the lord i see your hand just come on everybody's praying god is moving right now don't don't make it too late and if it's just the first time but the second if you're already saved, I'm saved. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the work of our life. But you might have some shortcomings in your life that needs to, you need to repent. And that's you this morning. Look, I need, I need to restart or reboot or reset. Lift your hands right there where you're at. And we're going to pray for you this morning. All right, praise the Lord. Now I'm going to ask you this morning to repeat this prayer. And this prayer is just a bow. Do you make it unto the Lord to admit that you need God in your life and to accept Him? You have to speak it out and say it out that you're doing this. So that's what the enemy knows too. So I'm going to ask you to repeat this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, forgive my sins. I'm a sinner. They need salvation. Save me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life. I reject the world and the world system. And I accept you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Seal me with your Holy Spirit. And for those that want to re reestablish your life, repeat with me. Say, Jesus, forgive my sins. I repent. For doing things my way. Help me. Work on those areas that needs to be worked. Help me. Make the effort. To live in peace. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. Amen. We're going to pray right now. Father God. We come before you in the name of Jesus. I pray that. For those that said that prayer for the first time. That you will seal it right now. And. Write their names in the book of life. Right there on Facebook Live or even here, Father God. Remove that old man. Kill it right now in the name of Jesus. They give him a new life. 
deliverance and healing right now. Heal right now. And for those that are rededicating their lives to you, Father, I pray that they will make that effort and make that peace to change those areas in their lives, Father God. Honor it. Give them a fresh anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's sing it one more time and then we'll close it. We'll close it with one more. Come on. Be exalted now in the heavens oh, as the glory fills yes, this Lord. place. Lights on. You alone oh, deserve our praise. Oh, You're the name of all Yes, Lord. As your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name of all names. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus this morning. Thank you for coming this morning. If you're watching, thank you for watching. We have some food available on the side for Run for Hope. Invest. Don't go hungry. Hallelujah. And don't forget throughout the week, Saturday, we have the drive-in movie. Hopefully we can see you there. God bless you.